I don't know if you can think of a time when what you've said has met two very different reactions between two people or two groups of people. That's often the case that, not that we're misheard, but people take it and understand it in different ways or their feelings about it are very, very different. And we're going to see a striking difference. Paul and Barnabas were asked to give a word of encouragement yesterday we saw. John Mark had abandoned them and their word of encouragement to the synagogue over in Pamphylia was the gospel that Jesus had come. They'd recounted the Old Testament story, helping the Jews who they were speaking to and the God-fearing Gentiles to understand how uh, the Old Testament fits together and how it points towards Jesus. Jesus is the one coming in fulfillment of all of God's promises to Abraham. He's the fulfilled king, the Messiah. And uh, here we go. Let's see what the reaction is to this word of encouragement. We're in Luke, uh, sorry, Acts 13 and verse 42. As Paul and Barnabas were leaving the synagogue, the people invited them to speak further about these things on the next Sabbath. When the congregation was dismissed, many of the Jews and devout converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who talked with them and urged them to continue in the grace of God. On the next Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and talked abusively against what Paul was saying. And Paul and Barnabas answered them boldly, We have to speak the word of God to you first. Since you reject it and do not consider yourselves worthy of eternal life, now we turn to the Gentiles, for this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and honoured the word of the Lord, and all who were appointed for eternal life believed. The word of the Lord spread through the whole region, but the Jews incited the God-fearing women of high standing and the leading men of the city. They stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their region. So they shook the dust from their feet in protest against them and went to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Very fascinating, isn't it? The different reactions. They were speaking this word of encouragement in the synagogue. But there were Jews and there were converts to Judaism, so Gentiles, non-Jews, who had become Jews in faith, although it's kind of unclear in the Old Testament how that would even work, although it seems that it was possible out in the, in the sticks as they were out in, uh, outside of Israel. And uh, uh, initially there's interest from everyone. Everyone who was there, they thought, oh, that's really fascinating, it's really interesting, uh, that I don't know if they take it as a word of encouragement. And it seems like after the meeting broke up and they're having, whether it's the morning tea break or the supper break, there's a group of Jews and devout converts to Judaism from uh, the Gentiles who come to Paul and Barnabas and they, they, they're convinced already. They, they This word of encouragement has really made sense to them and they understand that Jesus is the one, he is the Messiah, and they want to give their lives to him straight away and what does Paul do with them he urges them to keep walking in the grace of God right to stick with it now does is he aware of what's coming possibly um, why yeah you know, why urge them to continue in the grace of God if you suspect that there's going to be some reason not to and it's not long before uh, that comes about now they were requested to come back the next week right we want to hear more about this the whole synagogue had said that but who turns up? Nearly the whole city. I don't know if you can imagine the whole city, the whole of Ingleburn and Macquarie Fields or even uh, whichever the suburbs turning up to church because something happened and they wanted to hear this truth, this amazing thing. And that's where you see the two very different reactions. Some who hear the message and are saved, uh, but others are stirred up and they're angry and they speak abusively against what Paul's saying. They cannot handle it. They don't want it. And uh, they, they want to stop other people hearing it. They want to prevent the message from going out. They want to stop Gentiles particularly from coming in. That's what's angered them the most. And you can see what motivates them. It's not that they disagreed with what Paul said. It's not that they could prove him wrong. They, or that the, What he had described wasn't the Old Testament history and the promises of the Messiah. They didn't even try and refute the facts of Jesus coming and Jesus defending the grave. Because it's not, it's not a, a, um, an intellectual problem that they have, right? It's their hearts. What does it say? 
They were jealous. They were filled with jealousy and so they talked abusively against what Paul was saying. Where does the jealousy come from? It's really strange, especially since there are devout converts to Judaism already in the synagogue. But here's a new thing, and it's gained so much popularity so quickly. The whole city is turned out, right? And I, I wonder if they felt like they, they felt above the rest of the city. They didn't want the rest of the city involved. And they certainly uh, are jealous that this new thing is more popular than their old thing. And so it's got nothing to do with the rightness of the message. It's got nothing to do with whether God was at work or not. It's got nothing to do with whether Jesus really is the Messiah. They just, their hearts are evil. They're filled with this jealousy. And it's such an easy thing to be filled with, isn't it? When another church is doing better than us, we go, ah, you know, ah, how dare they? <laughs> uh, or you see another movement coming in and you think, wow, it's gaining so much popularity. You know, the st Australian statistics in the census show that yeah, Buddhism is the fastest rising religion because it's gone from 3% to 4% in, you know, five years or whatever it might be, whereas our percentage... Of, don't forget that st the percentages don't mean anything, right? It's, it's raw numbers that matter. And when you have 1% going to 2% or 2% going to 3%, that is, um, in terms of raw numbers... Uh, is not as great a change as some of the higher percentages. But anyway, so that, that's, a, that's a lesson for another day. But we can be jealous and angry, and it's so inappropriate and unhelpful, and particularly here, that jealousy drives them against the Lord. Uh, at the end of the word of encouragement, Paul had given them uh, a choice, a need to come to the Lord for mercy, and, and fear, hear the blessings and receive the blessings uh, promised to David, um, or there were scoffers who would wander and perish, right? That would take care that the prophets, what the prophets have said does not happen to you. Look, so you scoffers, wander and perish, for I'm going to do something in a day that you never believe, even if someone told you. And lo and behold, here are, are the scoffers, and they are powerful, and they do their work. Let's not be amongst them. Paul then, you know, how does he react? Well, he defends the Gentiles coming in and says, though the Gospels for all, this is always what the thing was, and quotes uh, Isaiah 49, I've made you a light for the Gentiles that you may bring salvation. He ends up, as if it's a prophecy almost about the Gospel preachers, but it's clear that the you is singular, and you go back and read it, and you is the Messiah, the suffering servant, the one who's coming to save, the one who... Uh, he's in, the iniquity of us all will be born on him from Isaiah 53. The one who, by whose stripes we are healed. The one who is going to suffer and die that we might bring, have right relationship with God, be brought into the relationship with God, who will rise again from the dead and who will bring feasting and joy, who will bring uh, rest for our souls. That promise is from him. He is the one, and Paul is his spokesman, and Barnabas is his spokesman, and we are his spokesman as we go out offering this, this hope, this light that God has promised to anyone and everyone. It's not just those who are insiders, right? Or that it's not just for those who yeah, grow up as children of the church today. It's, it's, it's everyone. This gospel is for our world that they might find light and hope. And uh, what happens? Well, there's this jealousy raging um, and going on, and Paul's going to move cities as a result as he shakes the, the dust off his feet. But at the same time, many, many people come to Christ. Uh, many of the Gentiles heard this, were glad, honoured the word of the Lord, and were those appointed to eternal life believe. That is, there's, there's those who are excited in the crowd and just, wow, this is a great new movement. And there's those who were appointed to eternal life. God is behind salvation. If, you know, for someone to come to a saving faith, God has to work that work in them. And those he did that day were very many. And the, the word of the Lord spread through the region and... Uh, Paul and Barnabas get kicked out, but the work's been done, the gospel's been preached, and now there is a new group alive in Jesus Christ, though there's jealousy and raging around them. Two very different reactions. What reactions do for you, uh, when do you have those two reactions to what things are around about? Is it appropriate? Uh, that's something to reflect on. Is there jealousy sometimes when um, other things seem to be succeeding that, that should, really shouldn't uh, but causes jealousy um, uh, or 
are you rejoicing when you hear the word of the Lord, when you hear another church thrive, when you hear, uh, hear God at work? Um, there are times to be jealous with a godly jealousy when people are sucked away into lies and dispute. But uh, for the most part, when you know, uh, if there's another great church around, that's fantastic. Let's praise God. Um, let's pray. Father, we pray, please, that as we hear the word of the gospel and the Bible ourselves, that we would uh, respond with joy and faith and uh, righteousness and repentance, that we would be filled with all these things that come from you. Lord, we know that salvation is in your hand, not just from winning it in the past, but in effectively working the lives of people. We pray that you would do that work amongst us and through us with other people, we pray for this Christmas that it'll be a time of great joy and that many people coming out of COVID would want to hear and that they wouldn't respond in jealousy and anger, but they would be delighted to hear of the Saviour, the one who came to um, uh, give rest to this weary world. Father, we pray, please, that many will put their hope in him. Father, we know that the gospel, though, stirs up other reactions to and so we ask that we would be patient and godly and kind as there are people who are jealous around us, who are angry at the gospel and angry at you. Uh, but we pray, please, that we would stick to the truth and remain in the grace of God uh, in the face of any difficulties. Father, please work your work in us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless everyone. Catch you again tomorrow.